So what we're going to do here, put my lovely wing cover on to protect it. I need to turn the radio off as well. So this wing cover here, put it there. And today we are doing brake fluid change. One thing I like to do is actually test the brake fluid that you're going to be putting in the vehicle. As I've seen it before where you're putting brake fluid in and the brake fluid isn't good. So I'm going to have to prop you up for a second. Hopefully you can see, you probably can't, but if I get my machine here, the brake fluid's good, which means we can proceed on with the brake fluid change. How we do proper brake fluid changes is through this pressurized bottle here. You can see just above 20 PSI. Normally if you're at the dealer, you do it at two bar. I don't really like doing it at two bar. I like to go 1.75 bar, one and a half bar to 1.75 bar, like that. That'll do. Send it up now, crack my nipples off, let some fluid drain out and we're done. Right, so here you can see, I'll flip it this way actually. So this is the bleed nipple here. There's your pad wear sensor there. We'll get these bled up. So we do this side, then we do the other side, and then we'll jump to the front and I'll show you how to do the front. So what you gotta get is your bleed bottle, which is here. I made a mess yesterday, as you can see. I had a lot of working. So it's one of them days, unfortunately. I'm gonna tidy up later. Um, over to here. So let's move this light out of the way because it's a bit too bright. I can put this bottle on the arm and get my spanner in here and it should just crack up and get it cracked off put your little bleed screw i'm trying to do this one-handed for you and then we're just gonna ease this nipple off a little bit just like this then we can see some fluid coming out Um, they're a bit awkward these calipers, there's not actually much room to do it. So what I'll do is I'll just drain, I'll do this till we've put probably about this much and then we'll do this much, then I'll empty it and then we'll do the same again up front. Um, so Audi say it's about, I think it's 750 mil is the, the oh, how much brake fluid you should flush through. I like to just, just, just do a litre. It's easy to book out for the customer. It's easier to, for me to do my books if I keep it at one litre. And it means you get a better, more bang for your book as well. I like to make sure all the fluid is brand new. So onto the other side, again, similar idea. This, because it doesn't have a brake pad wear sensor, has a normal nipple cover. What I like to do is just talk them down with a small quarter drive ratchet with an 11 millimetre. And that means I can nip them up good for example this side whoa, is all tight and good always best getting a little rag and try and wash off as much brake fluid as you can if you do it properly if you're doing the job properly you won't spill any but you always get a couple of dribbles um, i didn't on this side this side was super clean so this side i dribbled about three dribbles onto the caliper and that's just not good for an RS3. So what I do is see it there, a little bit of brake fluid there, I just wash that out with some brake cleaner once I've done the job, once I've done this side. Then we'll also what you need to keep an eye on, and what I always keep an eye on is, get your, get your stool, and just make sure that you're keeping the correct amount, amount of pressure in the bottom. So I just like to just pump it up again, I let it drop to about 20 PSI and then I pump it back up to 24, 25. But just keep an eye on that. You don't want that dropping too low because then it's not going to be doing anything. Okay, so outside nipple has been done. Spilt a shit low. For some reason, it's not coming through the nipple. It's actually coming through the thread. I've seen that happen quite a few times on the RSs. So I'm going to have to give that caliper a good old clean. But as for this one here, 10 mil on the front here. Crack that off, double check pressure. We're dropping a little bit, but we're still okay. Let that bleed through for a little bit. And we are doing good here. Let's just um, double check the torque of this outside one. Again, they, you don't, they're not holding the car together. 
all it's got to do is just create a good seal. And then what I like to do is get some brake cleaner. I pop the top on like that. This is why every single job has a consumables fee because this stuff isn't ex is expensive. And to do a proper job, especially working in a dealer my whole life, I feel like you have to use a lot of brake cleaner to do a very clean job. So a lot of my vehicles do get lathered in brake cleaner to keep things nice and good. Um, so that's why. And what I'll do is I'll get another torch because that one has just died on me. So as you can see, I'll put it this way. You can see that caliper there has no brake fluid on it anymore. So this will be good enough for the inside there. Then we'll just do the same thing there as well. So give that a nip. Repeat, rinse and repeat on the other side. Same again, we're doing outside first and then we'll hop onto the inside. So messy, these, these big calipers are an absolute pain. But yes, we are getting there. The bottle is nearly full, so we're gonna call that a win. Everything else looks good on this. Mag ride looking okay. Everything, discs are a bit shot on the front. It looks like it's had a pair of pads fitted to an old set of discs. I hopefully will be looking after this vehicle from now on, so we'll get this thing minted. It's going for detailing soon, so it's gonna be very, very shiny. What I also like to do is, once all the nipples are tight, leave that under pressure and also go around and scrub all the hooks. And that's what I like to do. Scrub the hooks from all the corrosion. And then what I'll do is get the alloy wheel and scrub that bit, which also gets corroded. Just here. And then I'll apply a very thin layer of high temperature I like to use brake pad grease on these, high temperature grease. I don't like that silver um, anti-seize, it's horrendous to work with. And so a very thin layer of um, brake pad grease is good. And the reason I leave it under pressure is to check for leaks and make sure we've got no leaks in the system. If I'm walking around and I see a nipple which is um, leaking, I will know and then I'll be able to address it before it goes out on the road. So what I'll do now is just put a tiny bit of brake pad grease, which is this stuff. And I'll put a bit on my finger, but I'll put a bit on here just for demonstration purposes. We're talking a pea size and then just work that in. We're talking a very thin amount just to stop that wheel from corroding again. And that's literally it. And that is how I do a brake fluid change and a hub scrub on a 2022 RS3. Um, I'll get the wheels clicked up, on and clicked up, and I'll show you that as well. So I'm gonna go around and do all So four. we have now, just clicking up the wheels. It's hard with one hand, as you can imagine. I go around every wheel to 120, to the specific torque setting, and then, oh, that's come off. And then I go around every wheel individually then again, every, you know what I mean, bolt, sorry every wheel again and then on the invoice i always put wheels torque to specific specification and then i can give that to the customer it's always recommended that you come back and have your wheels torqued again and that is it and then every time i've talked a wheel up i will only ever ever and i mean ever ever put the wheel ball caps on once i know the wheel is torque to specification. That way I know if I've done a wheel or not. So if I put these caps on, it means I've torqued the wheel to spec. Oh no, but they're awkward on these RS3s. The front wheel's super deep there, which make it very awkward. But yeah, I'm just gonna go around every single wheel now. Bear in mind, still under pressure, still checking, still constantly checking, can't be too sure. But that's it, talk all the wheels up and then she's done. So what I do, give the pedal a good pump. The pedals on these RS3s, I don't know if anyone's ever driven one, they aren't ideal, they're not fantastic. But this one's the done. one is, let's just turn this radio off for you. Um, have you, if you've ever driven one of these RS3s, you know the pedals are pretty crap, but fuck me. I'll tell you something, I can actually get these pedals quite good. 
they all need a brake fluid change early, I think, these um, new Shape RS3s. Because now I've got these brakes so unbe so unbelievably keen. They are very good. The customer is going to be buzzing with this because that's always a major complaint with these things is that the brakes are shit on them. Yeah, unreal them. Very good. Very happy with that. So this is what I do at the end of every job. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll know. But yeah, we um, take a photograph of the vehicle like this for our Instagram page. So if you don't know who we are, you need to follow us on the socials. We are at Colatech underscore on Instagram. We are also Colatech on Facebook. Don't really use Facebook very much. Um, just because Facebook's clunky. I don't like using Facebook. We have an Instagram page and that's a good one. Um, but I do do a lot of MQB stuff. We literally specialize in in MQB vehicles and MQB Evo vehicles. So this is one of them. Um, we do a lot of Golf R's here, S3's, RS3's, anything like that. Generic servicing repairs, engine lights, you know the score. I've got Otis, so genuine dealer tool. I've got a lot of equipment actually for such a small workshop. Um, don't take on any big jobs, unfortunately, nothing like engine builds, because there are specialists out there who do jobs like that. And I don't want to get involved with them because my unit is the size of probably a double garage, a normal house double garage. So yeah, thank you for watching. Um, please follow the Instagram and if you want me to start posting a bit more frequently, I'm gonna try and make an effort of when I'm not that busy post, especially the cool stuff what I get up to. Cause I know people like looking at cool stuff. I do a lot of generic two liter TDIs as well, but I also do a lot of performance stuff, mostly MQB vehicles. So just let me know if you're, if you're interested. Um, thank you for watching.